So just about 23 days until the bush like clash at the Coliseum. I'm back making a NASCAR related video. This is my preview of the NASCAR 2023 season. Talking about you know all the main stories. I'm just mostly going to focus on the Cup Series. We're going to talk about some other things as well. First of all, we're going to talk about schedule. Okay, so this is going to be a very interesting schedule. In the Cup Series, they're bringing the Clash back to the LA Coliseum, which is a good idea. It was a very success in its inaugural race last year. And honestly, I think it's a good idea for them to bring it back. I liked last, year, last year's Clash. And, um, well, it's just nice to know that they're going to, well, bring back the Bush Clash in uh, LA. And that is 23 days from now. We're going to start the season at Daytona like every year, but these are like the interesting things in the schedule I've noticed. Now, most of the races are going to be the same tracks on the same week, but we're also going to focus on um, the two races we're really going to talk about. They are bringing North Wilkesboro back to the schedule. It's a really good thing. It's going to be the host of the All-Star Race. Along with the All-Star Race, the Truck Series is going to be racing at North Wilkesboro for the very first time. It's going to be a very, very great race. Secondly, uh, they have relocated, um, they got rid of Road America and got replaced with Chicago. But one thing about the also race, it's nice that they at least got rid of that awful track that is Texas for the also race. Unfortunately, it still has a race for the, um, fall, for the fall and playoffs. But the Chicago Street Course, it's an interesting concept. I know it sparked a lot of controversy over, oh, they should have brought Chicagoland back. There are rumors if Chicagoland comes back, it's going to be after the contract of the Chicago Street Course ends in the mid-2020s, like 2025, 2026-ish. But Chicago Street Course is going to be a very, I think it's going to be a very fun race. It's going to be on my 18th birthday, July 2nd, it's the July 4th race. Again, they have axed Road America off of the schedule. Because the Xfinity Series is going to be racing at Chicago as well. Um, the Truck Series is coming back to the Milwaukee Mile. That is something that's going to be that that I can sort of like enjoy. That's going to be cool. I think is the X I believe the Xfinity Series might be going to what is it, Sonoma. I know one of the lower series, uh, the Truck Series went to Sonoma last year. I don't know if they're returning this year. But I do know, I think the Xfinity series, I believe, is like returning or going to Sonoma for the very first time. I think the US Cup was the only like series that raced at Sonoma, and the Xfinity series usually raced at Middle Ohio. The Truck Series used to not really race it that week, but now they are racing. They went to Sonoma last year. I don't know if they're going to be at that race during the week of Sonoma this year. Um. Another thing I'd like to point out, now we're going to talk about the drivers, the Cup Series drivers. Uh, last year we had 32, or you could say 31, full-time drivers of Kurt Busch getting injured, you know, midway through the year. He got injured and that, yeah, that concussion made him retire, but um, he was signed on a full-time contract, so I'm going to say it was 32 full-time drivers, even though he didn't race half that season, had Ty Gibbs drive his car. Um, who's not going full time? We've gone up to 34 full time drivers. They also have a lot of other like changes, you know. Jimmy Johnson's coming back. Uh, Zane Smith is going to be doing some cup races. Austin Hill is going to be with most with some for part time changes. Rick Ware has not announced who's going to be driving that 15 car. It's probably going to be J.J. Yeller, Garrett Smith is going to be those guys showing it. Joey Han will race the road courses as usual. 36 Chargers, the Chargers, they've gone up from 32 full-time drivers to 34 full-time drivers. We're going to talk about typically all of them. Ross Chastain's in his second season with Trackhouse. Um, you know him as the guy who pulled that hail melon off at Martinsville uh, last year, made it into the championship four. I actually have some cars that represent, you know, um, like first drivers Hamlin. I'm going to represent you guys. This is like a reenactment. We don't have a wall, but this 
Toyota Camry is gonna represent Hamlin because Hamlin drives a Toyota. Now I do have a Camaro diecast, but it's Chase Elliott. But this is a Pontiac GTO. We're gonna have it represent Ross Chastain. It's the you know again it would be weird to have Chase Elliott diecast represent uh, Ross Chastain. So but Pontiac used to be owned by. Um, GM who also owns Chevy. I say used to because they don't make Pontiacs anymore. But GTO will be chastening. Pride, you know, this this is this was the hell met in from last year. Denny Hamlin, the Toyota camera. This is how far they were prior to 23. And this is Ross Chastain. They're about this far apart. And then he did that hell met in and then you about that close by the time they got to the finish line. Chastain made it to championship four for the first time, broke out one, two races last year, and probably I would say have another really good shot at the championship this year. It wouldn't surprise me if he had could make championship four, maybe without having to make a move. Um, a lot of people also believe, oh, uh, Chastain is going to be the reason. People think, you know, would NASCAR make a rule about you know, trying to make a try to do another Hail Mary at Martinsville and you know is the, the worry is someone could try it for the win maybe in the spring race but the real concern is if m multiple drivers could try to do the Hail Mary at uh, Martinsville when he tried to ride the wall at video game move on turns 3 and 4 you know like that would be a concern if multiple drivers could very well try that at the same time. And if they do, then um, it's going to cause a big wreck. So, you know, that part of me wouldn't be surprised if NASCAR actually makes a rule about that. Anyway, it's Austin Cindric. He is the defending Daytona 500 winner. He won the Daytona 500 last year, beat out Bubba Wallace by about um, half a car length. So... By about half a car length. This is a representation about how much he beat him. I would say that might be one of the closest, probably the closest Cup Series finish this year. Um, Cindric had a pretty good rookie season. He finished in the top 20 half the time sometimes. And if he wasn't in the top 20, usually in the top 25. Most of the time, if he wasn't in the top 25, he just had issues. I could see Cindric being a pretty good driver. Wouldn't be surprised to see him, you know, start winning multiple races. If he wins this year, he'll just win one race, one race, but then probably by his third season, large drivers break out in their third season. So he will win, I would say, what, by 2024, win two, maybe three races. Bell did break out last year as well. We'll talk about him. Austin Dillon, uh, driving the number three car. The guy, you know, he won the race. So snuck his way to uh, win the spring twenty or no spring fall twenty twenty two race at Daytona. Snuck himself in that last playoff spot. Took Truex out, um, and you know he he that big wreck, that really poor officiating call, really controversial for NASCAR. They didn't notice the rain at turn one. That's what they say. They didn't notice the rain in turn one, and then half the field wrecked and. Austin Dillon managed to get through, and because you know all those drivers wrecked, we had like a two, three hour rain delay. And when they came back, okay, it was like it was a very easy win for Austin Dillon because he had to hold off like the worst drivers in the field: Cody Ware, Landon Castle, and like Noah Gregson, who was driving in Beard Motorsports equipment. He also okay, he did have some competition like Cindric and Truex. Cindric actually, I actually remember Cindric was leading for some of that post rain delay part of the race, but then he went below the WL line, went back, and just that just gave Dylan the win because there's no way those back markers were going to catch up to the guy. So, and Austin Dylan going, this is going to be his 10th season in the three car. The um, son of Mike Dylan, one of the high ranking executives for RCR, and the grandson, maternal grandson of Richard Childress. So, um, Kevin Harvick, sad to hear that he's going to be retiring this year. He was Dylan Hart's replacement, 60 time winner, 2014 Cup champion, 2007 Daytona 500 winner. 
um, had over 30 uh, Bush poll awards that Bush for. He's announcing his retirement. I will, I'm going to start rooting for him more racist than what I did recent. You know, I want to actually root for the guy now that he's going to be retiring. And, you know, it would be cool to see him winning. And he did break for the longest winless streak of his career last year at Michigan because he didn't win in 2021. He won at Michigan. Next week, won at Richmond. I don't think he's going to win this year, but it would be cool to see him get, get that final 61st, well-deserved 61st win of his career. I, I would sort of love to see that. That would be probably would be one of the most wholesome moments in NASCAR. But, you know, the guy is going to be 47, which is, you know, older than some of these star drivers that retired. When you have guys like Gordon and Johnson, you know, all retired at 45. Greg Biffle was in his mid-40s, too. So, I don't know how. I think Junior was in his early 40s, but he retired when he did because of that concussion he had that yeah that previous year in 2016 because junior had a lot of concussions in his career so and you'll probably explain why he wasn't very good when he went to Hendrick so but I'd say Harvick what a career the guy has had you know guy will obviously be make his way into Charlotte as a first ballot Hall of Famer so it'll be cool to see Harvick get into the Hall of Fame in like two or three years or whatever uh, Kyle Larson, uh, one of my personal favorite drivers. Um, very consistent, very fast driver. You see the guy win the championship in 2021 and won historic 10 races. Probably one of the best seasons for a driver in the history of NASCAR. He's actually the first driver since Jeff Gordon in 1998 to win double digit races. Gordon actually did it twice. No, he did it in 98. No, he may have done it three times actually, but. He last won 13 races in 1998, and then Larson won 10 races in 2021. But then 2022 wasn't that good of a year. He won that second race of the year at Auto Club, didn't win again till Watkins Glen held off AJ Almeninga and Chase Elliott um, before uh, he bumped Elliott out of the way at turn one, like that final restart. Um, he also... Um, Managed to hold off Chastain and Almeninga at Homestead. So, I could see maybe Larson having a better season. He's going to, you know, probably be a really... It's nice to see the guy really start to, like, get a better reputation. He's, like, one of the superstars. When he was with Ganassi, he was never really that good of a driver. Next, we have Keselowski. It's the guy's second season in RFK. The guy had his worst season overall last year, unfortunately. First year of RFK, new start, new season, you know. Uh, 2010, he was the last time he was winless prior to 2022 was 2010. It was his rookie year. Drove that 12 car for Penske, but he didn't do very good. But then he started winning races in 2011. And by 2012, the guy had a championship. But now he's much older. So we, I don't really anticipate on Keselowski actually winning another race. Not really in RFK equipment. I know Bosher won a race in RFK equipment. But Keselowski, you know. The guy was basically a back marker for much of the first half of the year. He had a top 10 at Daytona and didn't have another top 10 until Sonoma happened. And Sonoma does sort of also give like super speed waste. There was not as much as a chance to win. It's underdogs will get higher positions. But Kazowski was back marker all year. He had that 100 point penalty. And he was barely playoff eligible. He didn't make the playoffs at all. Um, he actually did, you know, have, you know, a comeback later in the season. He most of his top tens were in the playoffs, so it's nice to see the guy actually start improving back to that Penske speed he had by the time he got to like, you know, like Vegas or Texas, the the playoff tracks. By the time he got there, he was starting to become a better driver. Um, and, you know, Keslau, that was probably his worst season. First time he went winless since 2011. And to uh, see he I don't know if he'll win or not. Fat 6 car has not won since 2011 when David Reagan won at uh, the Daytona. No, yeah, Daytona Summer Race. So, it's nice to see, uh, you know, Keslowski like, start to, like, win races again. Like, I want to see him win races. 
Corey LeJoy, you know, one of the very mediocre mid drivers, almost got his first career win at Atlanta in the summer last year, and now at Atlanta is a super speedway. Um, uh, he almost got first and tried to pass Chase Elliott on the uh, last lap. Elliott moved him out of the way and he wrecked into Kirk Bush. So, and you know, that's not a guy you're never going to expect to like win a race. But, you know, to see that was LeJoy's. Biggest moment in his career, because he's ever come winning the race. Very mediocre drive. I don't expect much from the joy. Kyle Busch in the eight car. Now, um, he left JGR. He, I could see him probably having a good year. He, he has, you know, been regressing. Hasn't been that good uh, after he won his second championship in 2019. Uh, and he was a first round elimination last year. But now it's his first year in eight. His first year with Joe Gibbs racing in 2008, guy won eight races. He had a big, like, year. And then, next thing you know, the 18, that Eminem's car is a historic car for Bush, winning two championships. The guy so far has 60 wins, tied with Harvick. Um, Bush, I would say, will probably be driving that eight car for the rest of his career. So... And, you know, he could, you know, if he did a real good season in his first year of JGR all those years ago, he could maybe have a good season in his first year of RCR of his year. Chase Elliott, who I would consider my favorite driver, I mentioned I had a die cast of him, I got that, that, that die cast for Christmas. Elliott, um, really good driver. It's nice when he finally got that well deserved win at Atlanta, which is, um, which. It's basically his home track since he's from Dawsonville, Georgia, which ain't too far from Atlanta, I would assume. Um, but, you know, Chase Howard, really good driver. I expect him to be very consistent, very championship favorite this year. Everyone expects the guy to win the championship. Eric Amaroa, uh, mediocre driver. I don't expect much from Amaroa. He missed the playoffs for the first time since uh, joining SHR. Um. So, like, Eric Amaroa, the guy's aging. I don't expect much from Amaroa this year. Denny Hamlin, another aging driver who's been regressing. The 48-time winner has never won a championship. I would assume that's the most, you know, when the driver's going to fight a championship. But, hey, uh, Mark Martin never won a championship. Mark Martin, let's say, would be one of the best drivers ever. Never won a championship. Carl Edwards won, never won a championship. You don't have to be a champion to make the Hall of Fame. Mark Martin proved that. So I would say, you know, uh, best hopes from um, Denny Hamlin. I don't like the guy, but, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if maybe this year or the year after he could very well start winning races. So I could see him, like, not winning any races. It took him until the Southern 500 to win in 2021. The guy, you know, technically unofficially did win three races last year, but he got disqualified at Pocono. So, for having, like, a lot of illegal tape on his car, Bush, the runner up, got disqualified. That gave Ellie a Mickey, a Mickey Mouse win. Um, so, I would, you know, so, uh, um, Denny Hamlin, uh, I, I would expect him to probably, if he wins, this year, he'll probably get one or two wins. This retirement, it will be coming in a few years. Ryan Blaney, I was shocked to see him not win a race. Blaney had a breakout year in 2021. He won every se in every season from his rookie year in 2017 with Wood Brothers. He won one race in 2018, one race in 2019, one race in 2020, three races in 2021, but he went winless in 2022. He did win that very controversial Texas All-Star race. Which, of course, you know, sucked for having that uh, that one unnecessary caution on the last lap because Ricky Stenhouse Jr. brushed the wall. Um, NASCAR just wants a dramatic finish. That's just, you know, the, the NASCAR, like, officiating system, the officials just doing bad at their job, you know, like they always do sometimes. Um, so, I, I want to see Blaney... I think he's gonna like win like a few like win a few races. He almost did make the championship four, but missed out but just by a few points. I could expect him maybe he makes his championship four debut this year. Uh 
Chase Briscoe, driver of the 14 car, as we approach the 20 minute mark. The guy, you know, in his sophomore season got his first career win at Phoenix. He is a very good driver on road courses. He does okay on super speedways, I would say. Um, Briscoe um, is, like, you know, pretty. He's still a bit mediocre, but I could expect him to. Again, he's entering his third season, so he could very well have a breakout year. Uh, AJ Armandingo going full time in the Cup Series. The guy was a full time driver from like 2007, 2008 ish, all the way into 2018. Um, then he's, I guess, he sort of retired, went down to college part time for a few years, went full time, came a championship contender, and he was good enough to where the 41 year was going to have a shot in the uh, Cup in uh, Cup this year. I wouldn't be surprised to see him win a race. However, at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised to not win a race. He's also going to be 41. So that could also be a factor in him not winning a race. Um, if he does, I would say he'll win a race. Out. He could very well win a race at a road course. I would say, you know, he almost did win at Coda before Bowman spun him out. But he'll have really good chances that the road courses, you know, at Coda or Chicago... Or Watkins Glen. He finished second at Watkins Glen. The guy also, back in the Gen 6 era, did uh, pull off an upset win at the Indy Road Course in 2021. I could expect him to do really good there as well. So, uh, for all new. And, you know, he's starting to be fast in ovals. The guy finished, what, second, third place at Homestead? You know, he was battling for second with. That last resort was battling for the lead with Chastain Larson. Larson pulled away and is battling for second with, like, uh, like Chast Chastain. So, Armandingo could very well, you know, not break out you, but he could have a chance to win on some of the intermediates. He's also pretty good at super speedways. Colleague in the x series seems to always have speed at super speedways and start to show some speed. In the Cup Series of Super Speedways as well. He won his first Super Speedway race uh, at Talladega last year. And that was in the Xfinity Series. So, and he had that photo finish passed by Sam Mayer. I wouldn't mind Sam Mayer winning because he's the only junior motorsports driver last year to not win a race. So, uh, Almondingo, you know, he could sort of win anywhere. He start, Collard is starting to become a really good team. Next up, uh, we have Christopher Busher. That's what he goes by now. Christopher Busher, called Chris Busher. Guy, you know, had his best season last year. I was, you know, um, you never expect Busher to win a race. Guy is a pure underdog. But Chris Busher is a really, like, kind of talented driver. He put RFK back in the victory lane after five years of not winning a race. They've been a very mid team for like 10 years. They were good. In the, like, I would say 2012 would be their last good year because that's when they had, you know, Kenseth. The early 2010s, you had guys like Kenseth and Edwards, you know, winning all the... Kenseth and Edwards winning all the races. Sometimes Biffle would win a race or two. So, uh, yeah, I would expect, you know... For sure, I don't expect him to win this year, but to see him put the RFK back in the victory lane is a big thing. So, so, let's, so you know, so, you know, if Bushu does win another race, it'll probably be a super speedway, but again, that was his first win since 2016 when he won at Bristol. So, uh, Bushu, I could see him, you know, having a very mid year, but, you know, have some flashes of speed like he did last year. You know, he almost, he came second or third, I think, at the second Richmond race, which was Harvick's 60th and possibly last win. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. driving the 19. The guy's going to, is expected to be a free agent if he doesn't get a, a contract extension. He got a one-year extension with JGR last year. There are a lot of rumors of him retiring, and now that he's in his early 40s, and last year he was winless. So... The 2017 champion has been regressing for a few years now. It wouldn't surprise me to see him also announce his retirement. Um, you know, like Harvick is the... Everyone has to be paying attention to Harvick. We should also pay attention to Truex. If, you know, I would say if he does retire uh, this year, 
I would expect this location to be somebody like John Hono Nemechek or, you know, someone in the Toyota system. Nemechek is going to the Xfinity series. Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell, you know, I've heard a lot of people say around earlier last year, oh, Bell is the worst JGR driver. He's not that good. He ended up being the best JGR driver. He had a breakout three wins last year. He won at New Hampshire. He won at Verovo and he won at Martinsville in the fall. So to see uh, Christopher Bell break out the way he did, uh, it was impressive. He made the championship four, and you know I think you know Bell could be a very um, a very good driver. You know, have a shot championship. Wouldn't surprise me to see him return to the championship four. Guy has got a future. This kid's got a future. It's his fourth year, so he's gonna. He's, you know, one like the only JGR driver I really like. But I think he's gonna have a pretty good, pretty solid season overall. Uh, Harrison Bolton, very mid driver. People only remember Harrison Bolton was in the Cup Series last year because he flipped in the opening race at Daytona last year, like at the end of Stage One. He flipped and then Bowman turned them back over. Uh, Bolton was mid. He was rushed to the Cup Series, especially since he was winless in his last season in the Xfinity Series in 2021 after winning four races his rookie year. So to see, you know, that shows the guy's only like 20, 21 or something. Uh, it shows that the guy should not really be in the Cup Series at all. He should have stayed in the Xfinity Series, but, you know, Wood Brothers has 99 wins. They want to get that 100th win and they chose the worst guy to do it, Harrison Bowden. So, um, yeah, I think the guy's going to be mid. He got rushed up to the Cup Series. So, Joey Logano, again, someone I don't like. Uh, he got his second championship. Guy had a pretty good season, won four races, including the championship race. Since 2014, the champion has always won the championship race. So, you just know, that's just always going to happen. Uh, Logano ended up, had a pretty impressive year, but guys 31, you know, Logano haters like me are saying, oh, um, uh, we won, I hope he has a bad year, but the guy's like 32, guys, he's gonna, like, be a Hall of Famer, so to be unbiased, yeah, Logano's gonna, is still a really consistent driver, and he's gonna be winning a few races this year. He also has a thing of winning inaugural races. He won the inaugural Bristol Dirt Race. He won the inaugural Clash. And he won the inaugural Gateway Race. So, yeah, no. I don't know if he's too good at road courses. But one surprise me. If he wins at Chicago, he would win his fourth inaugural race. Bubba Wallace... Uh, uh, Bubba Wallace is starting to, you know, improve as a driver. It's his third year of 23-11. Guy got his first win, Mickey Mouse win last year because it was range short. I think all range short races and Mickey Mouse wins. The guy had a dominant ra race at Kansas last year. For the first time, he won a race and actually was able to finish the race. Um, um, so, uh, Bubba Wallace, is, he's, again, we're being unbiased. So Bubba Wallace is starting to have a break. He he I could see him like winning a race or two, maybe make his playoffs debut. I, I honestly think he's gonna make his playoffs debut this year. William Byron driver of the twenty four. I expected Byron to actually break out last year. He did win two races for the first time, but that was in the first half of the season winning Atlanta and Martinsville. And then the second half, he wasn't that great. Byron's a questionable guy. I don't know just how good Byron's just gonna end up being. So, you know, I think he's going to, you know, have a pretty solid year, you know, with Hendrick in the 24. Justin Haley, driver of the 31 car. Uh, it's his second year of college. I don't expect him to do much. He had a few flashes of speed this year. Did better, a little better than what I expected from last year. But, you know, I think Justin, Justin Haley is, you know, going to be, you know, a typical run of the mode driver. He'll have some flashes of speed, lead a few laps at super speed waste. I think his best finish was third, which was at an intermediate track. I don't remember where the track was, but his best finish was at an intermediate track. So, and he's had a lot of top tens at intermediates as well. But I think this is some of his best uh, tracks. So, as much as I don't expect, I don't expect too much from Justin Haley. He's going to, 
you know, still have a pretty mid-pack year. Michael McDowell, the 34 driver, former Daytona 500 champion. Now, he may not have as good as the years he had last year. He had his career best season last year. More top 10s last year than he had any other season. With crew chief Blake Harris. Unfortunately, Harris is leaving that team. The crew chief Alex Bowman. But, uh, you know, we're 30 minutes into this video anyways. But uh, uh, Michael McDowell has had more top 10s than he had in his career. More top 5s than he had in his career. I would assume combined because McDowell used to be a very, very mid driver. He, I think, is really good on road courses, super speedways. You know, he can lead laps on road courses. I, if he does, I don't really think he's going to win a race. But if he does win a race, he's going to win at, like, Coda or Chicago, Indy, whatever. He's going to win at a road course this year if he does win. I, again, I don't wouldn't be surprised if he's winless. He is still a mid-pack driver. And he's got a different crew chief this year, so we don't know how good the guy's gonna be. Um. Next up, um, we have um Todd Gilliland. Guy was rushed up to the Cup Series. It's you know front row tradition of having underdeveloped rookies. They did break the tradition of firing a rookie and replacing with another underdeveloped guy. But Todd Gilliland, I would say, I think he did better than Alfredo did in twenty twenty one. But Gilliland, very mediocre driver, you know. Um, I think, you know, Gilliland just, you know, he could have a slightly better year last year because now he has Cup Series experience, but the lack of Xfinity experience is going to hurt that guy's career. Okay, his career is going to be hurt from the no Xfinity starts in his career. Yeah, he was in that front row chain, but if you skip the Xfinity, you need to have Xfinity experience to really be a good driver in Cup. That's why I don't think Gilliland's going to be a good year. And their idea of, they want to run Zane Smith part-time, like the 36 car. Also, the defending trucks champion has never raced in the Xfinity series. So, again, don't expect Zane Smith to do much, especially since Smith is going to be part-time. Ryan Priest is returning to a full-time ride in the Cup Series this year. And, you know, to see Priest uh, race in a uh, Cup, you know, again, it's interesting. He was the reserve driver for Stuart Haas, but never raced for them because, of course, no one did get injured despite the uh, questionable safety of the next-gen car and two guys getting concussions. Uh, Priest ran part-time with Rick Weir, who now has a tech alliance with Stuart Haas, Rick Will also runs that tech alliance with RFK now. Uh, Ryan Priest um, is um, Ryan Priest is like a really like um, he he's a mid driver. I don't expect much from him. Uh, I would say he would be the favorite to replace Harvick in uh, twenty twenty four when Harvick does retire. I think he's gonna be the favorite to replace. Uh, Harvick, if not him, maybe Custer. But, you know, Alex Bowman was already in Hendrick when Johnson retired, and then Jimmy Johnson retires, and then Bowman just takes his car and has someone else drive his car. And I, I think that would be similar. I think the 2024 Stuart Haas signup would be Priest in the 4, Amarora in the 10, Briscoe in the 14, and Custer back in the 41. You know, Noah Gregson's going to the Cup Series this year. He's going to be a rookie. And, uh, I think despite how good he was in the X-Fan Series, the team he's going to be with, which is now named the Legacy Motor Club, is going to hurt his rookie year. And it's going to cause him to be pretty mediocre this year. It's going to... I don't think it'll look like he was rushed, but, you know, he'll be, a, I think, a lower bid pack driver. May occasionally break top 20 starts. Um... Uh, he'll occasionally make top 20 starts and all that. But I don't really expect... I think of the two rookies, he's going to be worse than Gibbs. Honestly, as much as I don't like Gibbs, he's going to be worse than Gibbs, I think. Um, Eric Jones, uh, I think, has a really good chance at making the playoffs. Eric Jones is going to be... Um, Eric Jones is going to be... Uh, like... Uh, I think it wouldn't surprise me to see him win races. He put that 43 back into victory lane 
for the first time since 2014, the 43 won a race at Darlington. He's good at Darlington because he also, uh, during the Gen 6 here in 2019, won a race with the 20 car um, when he was with Joe Gibbs. Eric Jones, I could see him very well making the playoffs. If uh, Jones um, Jones will probably win a race, I don't think he'll win a second race, but he'll be, make the playoffs. He'll probably be a first round exit, but still be a very good playoff contender. It wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me at all to make playoffs. I could see him winning races. He's becoming a really good driver despite running mid pack Legacy Motor Club, uh, a Legacy Motor Club, which is their new name. They were Petty GMS, that mid pack equipment. But he won in that uh, Richard Petty equipment last year. So, Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick had a good breakout year again. The third season just happens to be when drivers break out. We saw, you know, Chase Elliott broke out in his third season. First two seasons was winless, and then he won three races in 2018. Tyler Reddick, first two seasons was winless, and won three races in 2022. He broke out, and I think he's going to make 2311 a very competitive and consistent team in that 45 car. You know, and see him... Uh, Go to 2311. It was nobody surprised he was going to that team. He had already technically signed a contract with 2024, but Kurt Busch got that concussion, had to retire, and had to be pushed up a year early. But, you know, he's going to be a good championship contender. I could see him, you know, making it up to the round of eight. If he's lucky, he will be in the round of four, but he is in 2311 equipment. So he is going to be a really, you know, consistent driver. We could probably even see both 2311 cars make the playoffs. I could see Wallace making it in on points or maybe making it by winning a super speedway race and then Reddick uh, making it in, you know, on a few wins. So yeah, I think 2311 is going to, they're going to be a really like good team. Now we have Alex Bowman driver of the number 48 car. Uh, Bowman, uh, Despite really breaking out in 2021, he did uh, mid. He did win at Vegas, but the guy, uh, you know, he was driving like he did when he was driving the 88 car. Um, back when he was driving the 88 car, which was renumbered the five when Larson took that ride. But Bowman is going to be like, I don't see Bowman doing good. I think that concussion is going to hurt his performance. I know. I said earlier in the video, Junior had a lot of concussions. That, but I do think those were Junior's performance with Hendrick, his earlier years with Hendrick. Um, but Bowman, I could see, you know, it wouldn't I actually surprise me. And he's going to be free agent this year. But it wouldn't surprise to see Bowman, you know, um, go win this. I think that concussion could have a chance. Him missing five races from that concussion could... You know, have a chance at hooting his performance for 2023. You know, injuries, you know, it, it was the reason why Junior retired in 2017. It's the reason why Kurt Bush retired. I don't think he's going to retire, but, you know, I could see him I actually see Bowman going in this. Next up, we have Cody Ware. Cody Ware is the only full time driver that is truly a backmarker driver. He runs sub top 30 in like every race. And yeah, I know Rick Ware is a back market team, but if he was good, if he was on a good team, you know, he would, you know, get get released. He would get cut from the team. The reason why Rick Ware hasn't to cut him is because, well, his dad, Rick Ware, is Cody Ware's dad. It's family ties. You don't get rid of drivers that are related to you or any high ranking executive on that team. So yeah, Rick Ware. Cody Weir is just with that team. He's sort of stuck with that team. There's nowhere, nothing, nowhere else he could go. Uh, now we have um, Ty Gibbs, a rookie, the reigning Xfinity Series champion, very controversial driver for many reasons. He's not mature. He didn't have much experience in the Xfinity Series. We don't, we don't know if he's going to do good in the Cup Series or not. Especially since he's a rookie, so he has questionable potential. He hasn't matured. He's not really a mature driver because of how old. But he's very overly aggressive, and I think that could hurt his rookie season as well. However, because of the equipment that Graxon's going to be running for the Legacy Motor Club, uh, I could see Gibbs running, uh, you know, 
Joe Gibbs equipment. It's family ties. So he's going to be with that team his entire career, basically. I could see Ty Gibbs being the better rookie among the two. Ty Dillon ends up, you know, he usually is, you know, the worst of the Dillon brothers. None of the Dillon brothers are really that good, but Ty is a very mediocre driver. Uh, Ty is just, you know, and, you know, he was on a bad team last year. He's always with a bad team. He ain't, again, if he's on, a, if he was on a good team, I said, it's pretty aware. It's just, they would cut him. And he got cut by Jermaine. Well, Jermaine didn't cut him. Uh, Jermaine was just, uh, you know, Jermaine was just a very, like, they shut down, and then he lost the ride for a year, went to Petty GMS, now known as the Legacy Motor Club, and now he got uh, released. He got cut by them. Now he's surprised. Now he's on a back more good team like Spire. So, yeah. Uh, Ty Dillon is just screwed. There, there's nothing he, he He just sucks, really. Last but not least, a guy that doesn't really suck, Daniel Suarez. I like Daniel Suarez. The only Mexican driver in the field. You know, is actually one of my personal favorites. He won his first race guy. It used to be a very mid driver. Broke out on his first race at Sonoma. He is really fast. Trackhouse is a very, really fast team overall. I think uh, Suarez is going to be a really good driver. You know, what, could he be a championship contender? We don't know, but he's going to hope make it into those later rounds in the uh Championship. I could see him making it. He made it as far as the round of 12 last year. He could probably, you know, make it to the round of 8 this year. Would he make the championship four? We don't know, but Suarez is a really, you know, impressive driver, and my battery is running low. We named every single driver the full season preview this year, so we're gonna end the video right now. Goodbye, bye. See you next time.